Hi everyone, this is Kai and welcome back to my channel. This is the second time I'm recording this intro, by the way. The first time I did it, it was like not downloading onto my computer, so I'm like kind of pressed right now that I have to do this again. Pray to God that this works. If you're watching this, that means it did, because if I have to do this for a third time, I ain't doing it. Anyway, you probably do not care one bit. This is gonna be a wig tutorial on the style that I'm wearing on my head right now. You know that girl from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory who like turns into a blueberry? I feel like I look like her if she had like died and crystallized. So I'm gonna show you guys how I styled this wig into an updo. I had gotten some requests to do like a beehive style wig, which is sort of what I was going for, but you'll see this is a little bit more messy, I guess, but you could easily just swoop this back and make it look really clean and neat. If you wanted to have like a cleaner, smaller, like simpler updo, you could start off with just a shorter wig, something around shoulder length, and then you'd have less hair to put up. But I kind of wanted to, I don't know, challenge myself and for some reason, I just like to look like a cartoon character. This is what it looks like from the side and from the back. As you can see, it is like quite big. I don't really wear updos that often personally, but when I do, this is the method that I use to style them. So if you want to see how, then just keep watching. Okay, so I have our wig here on the stand. If I had to take a wild guess, I'd guess it's probably about 20 inches long, um, something around that. The reason I bring up length is because obviously an updo on like a lace front wig is gonna be easier when the hair is shorter, like almost shoulder length hair. When the hair is longer, it just adds more weight. It is harder to sort of defy gravity. But I wanted to show you how to do this technique on any length of hair, as long as it's not like a pixie cut, obviously. So the first thing I've done with the wig is just pin it up here along the hairline, which you see me do in all of my wig tutorials. Another place you're gonna wanna pin it, which might not be immediately obvious, is gonna be the back. And in the back, I want you guys to stretch this back part down as far as you can. The reason why is because if you go ahead and style your wig and you find that it comes up too short, you can't really stretch it out once the style has already been done, once all the bobby pins have been in and once the hair has been nicely coiffed. So you don't wanna have your boy hair showing in the back, so you have to stretch it out in the beginning so that it covers up your huge man head. Let me just put this up in a little ponytail so you can see. So if you see the back, there's this little part here that goes at the nape of your neck, and I'm gonna pin it down, and I prefer to use the longer pearl head pins for this. So I stretch it down, and I pin it. I use about four of them. I, I'll use two on each side, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and curl the wig. I know this wig already has some curls built into it because it is straight out of the bag, but I want a tighter curl. I want our Optu to kind of have this like messy, like wavy vibe, sort of like how Ursula's hair is. Like I don't want it to be like super straight and perfect. So I'm gonna use these orange wire mesh rollers. They're seven eighths of an inch in diameter. And you've seen me curl my wigs so many times. I don't want to have to explain it again, so I'm going to leave some of my previous wig tutorials in the description so you can see more in detail how to curl your hair and also how to tease your hair because I'm also going to be teasing the wig and I'll do all of that in time lapse because I really want us to focus most of the detail on this tutorial on the part where I'm actually doing the updo. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing this little grunt work. Okay, so now that I have curled this wig, we are gonna move on to the teasing and sculpting part of its tutorial. Now the key to an updo, or at least how I do it, is not necessarily about making all of the hair just stand up with a bunch of hairspray and making it defy gravity. The way I do it, I will actually take like the back 40 to 50% of the hair here and then just fold it down so it's just out of the way. 
Um, and then the hair up front, that's the one that I'm really teasing and sculpting and using tons of hairspray to really like just be out of the face. But with that being said, I'm still gonna tease the entire head of hair because even the back, even though I'm folding it down, I wanna tease it A, so that it still has a little bit of volume back there and B, because the teasing is very important in making sure that the hair has some resistance to it so that when we put the bobby pins in, it's not so slippery and they just slide right out. So teasing is a very important step. You know, the way that I tease my wigs doesn't really differ that much based on the style. Like you can watch how I tease my wig in the video where I'm doing victory rolls or the video where I do the straight hair and it's all the same sort of backcombing technique. Okay, I'm finally done teasing the whole wig, and this is what it looks like. Fabulous. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the process of smoothing it all out with my brush so that I can kind of get a feel of what is even going on here. Because I, like I said, I wanna fold down that back part. And I'm just lightly smoothing just the surface of the hair. The process kind of involves putting the head in like a headlock and then it's pretty awkward. So let me get out of the way all the hair that I want to keep up, which is maybe gonna be this. So what we're gonna do to fold all of this down is after you've brushed it nice and smooth, cause look at this, we want it to look smooth, especially here on the sides. This needs to look pretty cause this is what people are gonna see. So smooth it like this. Now, I recommend doing these updos on a wig that's a little bit darker because it's gonna require lots of bobby pins. And unless you can get like light colored bobby pins or a bobby pin that matches your wig, which would be ideal, um, it's best to do it on a color where the bobby pins aren't gonna be as obvious. So I'm gonna put a line of pins all the way down right here. And by a line, I don't just mean like bobby pins next to each other. I do it in this line of like X's that I'm gonna show you and the X's just help to reinforce the pins. And now you'll notice if I let this go, it stays on its own. This is also a great technique for hair that you want to all part all to one side and not have it move, is having this line of pins going down the middle. Um, I was about to reach for this. This is furniture polish. That's not what you want to use. You want to use hairspray. The cans are both yellow, right? So I'll just spray this. With this back section, once we folded it over and pinned it down the middle, we're gonna fold it back one more time, but instead of just folding, we're kind of gonna roll. So first, brush this out again, and then take it just with my fingers. Just like that. And then I'll use a bunch more bobby pins, but this time you kind of have to make sure you're really doing a good job at hiding them. So I'll kind of place them within the roll, if you know what I mean, like right here inside this fold. That way they're hidden. Once you think you have enough pins in there, go ahead and add a couple more. And then you can lock it in with hairspray. Even though we folded up about half the hair, this is still a lot of hair to tackle. So what I'm gonna do is again, section it off. So I'm gonna deal with the front like bang layer a little bit later. Right now I'm gonna deal with a layer of hair that's right above that back folded down part. I believe it's called like a French twist. I just use my own language, okay? What purpose does this hair here serve? Well, it's gonna be what's cushioning the entire updo. It's gonna be what's defining the height of the whole thing. Now right here is another edge that you want to brush really nicely because it's another edge that needs to be smooth because it's what people can look at. Now what I like with my wigs um, proportion wise, I don't like my updos to really be wide over here. I want it to really be pulled back at the sides and this is the side that needs to be pulled back right here. So I'm really going to brush that down flesh to the wig head. Um, I can kind of see that there's that little wave pattern going on because of 
obviously how I curled it earlier. Um, I don't know if you can really see. There you can kind of see. That little wave pattern, I think that's pretty. So I'm gonna keep that and just kind of freeze it in place and put a bunch of pins in it. Do you see that? Remember how I said I like the sides here to be really flushed to the head and really flat? That's gonna require a lot of pins sort of right here, pulling it back. So that's where I'm putting these pins. Again, I'm putting them in that X formation. Now I'll take this little end here and I think I'll tuck it in a little bit so you can't really see. All you see is that really pretty wave. Maybe I'll sort of fan this out a little bit so it looks a little bit plumper. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now we've folded down one third, two thirds of the hair. Now we just have this front third to deal with. Again, it's up to your own discretion. How do you want it to look? Do you want it to be smooth? Do you want a piece to fall down? Because you can also do that. Like maybe if I want this little piece to go over my ears, I think that's pretty. I'll show you another updo that I have that's just 100% up. Here it is in brown. Again, we have that little roll in the back. Girl, you had rolls all over the place in the back. It was disgusting. This one is just very corporate fish. It's all pulled up and out of the face. I think for our purple wig, I want to do something a little more fun and maybe like asymmetrical. I'm taking this hair little by little by little. So I have this section, this front section, and I'm brushing it smooth. I like to use a little bit of furniture polish when it's hard and it feels like the hair is just super dry and frizzy. It really just helps the brush glide through it. And then right now it looks straight, but if you let it fall a little bit, you'll see that pretty wave pattern come back to life. So there's that hair that we've just sort of laid down there and I'm going to freeze it in place. Obviously I'll add some more bobby pins later, but I'm just hairspraying this because I like the way it looks. Then I'll do this side over here. This is the furniture polish that I'm just adding to make it look nice and smooth. And then I'm going to lay this down as well. And again, freeze it in place with hairspray. And then finally, the frontmost piece. Still keeping, by the way, this, it's very important that it's teased right here at the base, because that's what's going to help it stand up. But I really want to brush out from right about the middle all the way to the end. I want that really nice and smooth. Then adding that furniture polish, which just really makes it look milky and soft and shiny as well. And then finding a nice way to lay it down that I like. Once you can kind of get the hair to stand up, it's still not going to be strong enough. The idea of an updo is it kind of has to be this helmet of hair. So it needs to be really hard, which is going to involve lots of hairspray and lots of bobby pins. So you need more pins. And later on, we'll focus more on the details of making these little top ends look nice and pretty and making them lay right. But first, we have to secure the base of all of these strands of hair and make sure that they don't budge. Once you feel that these strands are securely in place, I'm going to add a couple more pins just because I'm kind of paranoid about that. Then you can sort of focus on how these ends look up here. So maybe they require a little bit more brushing. Maybe you can lay it. Maybe you want a wave to come up right by your ear. Maybe you want to add to this thing that's going on back here. If you see any frizziness, you can brush that out. Now that I like how these waves up here are sitting, I think that looks really pretty. I'm going to lock some of them in with some bobby pins because really hairspray is not going to be enough to really freeze it in place. You want the bobby pins to mechanically hold them down. So maybe you want it to bulge out a little bit more here in the front. Maybe you want it a little wider. Maybe you want it a little skinnier. Do what you need to do with the bobby pins. And then once you're truly happy with how it looks, 
you want to freeze it like it's going into the next ice age. My hairspray philosophy is that if I see a part that's blowing with the blow dryer, I add more hairspray. I really do want to create a helmet of hair that's really going to last a long time. I get lots of questions about how to travel with your drag and pack it so that the wigs don't get ruined and that's a whole nother video but a big aspect of it is really hairspraying it down. This is the finished wig. I think I've put enough hairspray in this. Usually when I put it on I'll still add like a couple more coats of hairspray because I'm crazy but this is a finished wig. I I'm gonna go change into some drag and put on some makeup so you can see what it looks like on. So this is the finished look. Here's what it looks like from the side and then from the back. Oh my god, let's just take a moment of silence for this highlight, by the way. I use this um, product from MAC. I know some of you are going to ask. It's their Dazzle Shadow Liquid, which is kind of just like, almost like lip gloss, but it's like so glittery. Can you see that? I have been like resisting the temptation to just put it all over my body. And then I put some silver stars over top of it so you could really see it from a distance. And in the words of Ronald McDonald, I'm loving it. You know what else I just realized it looks so fierce is if we had like a stripe of glitter up in this wig, sort of like the Bride of Frankenstein, but like glitter. That'll have to be for another video. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video and learned something cool and maybe get the chance to try it out on your own. So many of you have been tagging me in your pictures using my last wig tutorial. When I say I got so many DMs of you guys cooking your wigs in pots and pans, oh my god, it was so funny. I'll put in some pictures right here of you guys recreating that last video. Please continue to do that because I love seeing it and let me know what else you want to see from me on this channel and maybe I'll do it next. But until my next video, I hope you guys are all doing well and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.